Welcome to the NRT Now podcast, giving you the latest in Christian music news, topics, and artist interviews directly from the largest Christian music site online, newreleasetoday.com. Now, here's your host, Jake. Hey, y'all. Welcome to episode 34. And if you've been with us for a while, we just want to say welcome back. And if you're new here, we just want to give you a very warm welcome. And for everybody, if you haven't yet, we just invite you to go back into our previous episodes and just have a listen to some of the other awesome conversations that we've had over the past, what is that now, 33 episodes? So yeah, if you haven't yet, go ahead and uh, look back and take a listen to some of the previous episodes. So for this episode, we have a little bit longer conversation with Josh Baldwin ahead of us here, so I don't want to take too much time up here at the front. I just want to pop in and say, hey, I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I hope that you know, even through this tough season that you guys have been able to find some joy and that you guys have been getting through. And I know that this past few episodes have been kind of a COVID series or a quarantine series, however we want to title that. But I really hope that you've been encouraged, just like I have, of just hearing some of these other perspectives and how different churches, how different artists, just how people are really digging in and working through this current season. And I know I've said this a few times through some of our conversations in the past episodes, but I really hope that as a church, you know, as individuals, that we can really take the lessons that we've learned throughout this season here and that we apply them going forward once everything's all back open and we're back to whatever normal looks like after this. So like I said, I just really hope that you've been as encouraged as I have. And speaking of Josh Baldwin, he put out a new album called Live at Church. And if you guys are missing that live worship, just like I am, just like Josh is and all that, oh my goodness, guys, like this is a good throwback to when we actually got to all be in church. <laughs> and the good thing is, is that we're starting to open back up and we're starting to be able to get back into church. And I'm really looking forward to that. And this is a good reminder you know, of what we have to look forward to. So like I said, I'm, I'm ready, guys. I'm ready to get back into church. If anybody from my church happens to be listening, I'm ready to worship with you guys again. And yeah, and it's soon, guys. It's coming soon. There is hope at the end of this. So don't lose sight of that, guys. There is hope, and we're almost there. So that being said, here is my conversation with Josh Baldwin. We are here with Josh Baldwin. Thanks for hanging out with us for a little while, man. Hey, it's so good to be here. I first heard of Josh Baldwin when Stand In Your Love came out. Is it Stand In Your Love or Standing In Your Love? It's Stand In Your Love, but you can call it whatever whatever you would like. I'll take either one. <laughs> if you're singing or if you're trying yeah. to reference the song. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Let's talk about that song a little bit because I think that's a really good song right now for our current environment where there's a lot yeah. of fear. There's a lot of stuff going around, a lot of division, just so much junk going on around <laughs> yeah. our present situation. And I mean, what a message to say my fear won't stand a chance because I'm standing in your love. Yeah. It's funny that you said that. Cause I was telling my wife, like right after all this happened, you know, the quarantine came and everybody's at home and, you can feel fear start to set in. I all of a sudden started getting tagged on people's Instagrams way more than normal with them singing and, and referring to stand in your love. And so I was like, Oh wow. Yeah, no, that's true. That is a good song for this month. Yeah. <laughs> and it, 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 I mean, it's like two years old now, I think. And those had kind of winded down and, you know, almost stopped. And then, yeah, there's been a surge of them just with the, with the time going with what's going on. But um, I think that's what I love about the song too. What other people probably like and love about it is the truth that, and the simple truth. It's it's a it's a very simple song, but it's sometimes it's so easy, especially nowadays, to get wrapped up 
and what's going on around us and, and maybe too much news, too much social media, and then all the fear creeps in. And really, it can be just as simple as just refocusing on the love of God and who he is and what he's done for us. And that can just wipe away the fear. So that song has been special to us. Well, and it's easy to just say, don't fear the virus, right. you know, Yeah. at the same time, so hard to actually apply. But when you're talking about just don't fear, it's like, okay, but what do I think about? What am I doing? Like, this yeah. is all I right. see. Right. I like what you say about just refocusing because it's not about just not fearing. It's about focusing on God and who he is and the love yeah. that he does have for us, to, even through this season. Oh, totally. Sometimes even with my kids, it's easy for me to say, hey, don't do that. But sometimes I need to, to give them tools to help them not to do that. <laughs> and uh, I think, yeah, that's what the Lord's done. He's given us tools to be able to use them. And he's teaching us how to use them to get out of the way of fear and to remove it. And I mean, this time has definitely done that for us. It's It's been a time of refocusing and kind of refining things. Well, you almost have to because... I mean, you're stuck at the house for so long. that Right. You either refocus and, and get better at things or you're just at each other's throat all day as a family. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, goodness. You have to. You have to. The one good thing about that you're talking about family is that we have gotten to spend a lot more time with family and to just refocus a lot of things. And yeah. for someone that has usually has a long commute, I mean, my commute went from about an hour to a minute or 30 seconds if I fall <laughs> just, down the stairs, you know? <laughs> yeah. But to just spend that time with that family, it's, I didn't know what I was missing until I've been stuck at home with the family and the two kids for, I think it's about two months now that I've been doing this. Wow. Yeah. We were talking about this the other day, my wife, I, I mean, the last three months, two or three months, it's been the most I've been home in consecutively consecutive days the most i've been home in maybe five years and we had found a nice groove and thing you know we we definitely had done things wrong at first and then we find a groove in traveling with like okay when i'm home i'm gonna be home i'm not gonna i'm gonna try to like not have much to do when i'm just home and i'll just it'll just be family I think we were doing good, but then there's something about when I'm just home all the time that I realize, I'm oh, sorry, my <laughs> wife just walked in. <laughs> um, there's something, I better I better say this right, she's watching. I know, right? There's some, some <laughs> truth here, here, we'll see if this is true or not. Right. Oh, excuse me, this is my dog. <laughs> so, yes, there's something, <laughs> let me go back <laughs> We were in the middle of talking and she, uh, this is real. Hey, this is your real life podcast. She opened the door and she was going to see if my dog wanted to stay in here. And then he, he did not. It's been a mess. So anyway, we're back. Edit this out. You no, know, this don't, is, don't. This People is need to know. This quarantine. Is, this is real life, real, real quarantine life. But I, yes, I think what it's done is being home with family 24 seven, kids not going to school and, and learning how to homeschool them. And it's let us see maybe how how much better we could have been doing with our time at home. And it's definitely made us slow down and realize that, oh, man, there's little things that I really – I want to be doing better and doing more in my kid's life. And so in that way, this, it's been a, a crazy blessing in some ways to just be forced to stop. Because I was talking about this the other day with her, with my wife. I don't know that – we would have completely stopped like this right now. I think sometimes things have to be going off the rails and your marriage falling apart for you to finally just, okay, I have to stop. And that wasn't happening. We're in a great place. But then when things do stop and you do see how much better things could have been and you see the things that maybe you could be doing better, then it's like, wow, what a blessing to have this like force stoppage in everything to just sit here and focus on family and the Lord and what really matters, you know, and, and all the fear of what are we going to do job wise and just financially, that's a real thing. And that's definitely tried to creep in. When I think about on the other end, the, what the things that we have gained as a family through this, man, I, I wouldn't have traded this for anything. It's, it's been invaluable really. That's exactly me too. We've gotten really, really busy as a family and 
it's funny. My wife is a stay at home. We've homeschooled our kid for pretty much her whole school career. Well, yeah, for her whole school career. Oh, wow. So you and, guys are, you guys are already used to it and you're good at it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to, but my wife watching everybody try to homeschool, like all of a sudden she's had a smile creep across once. Or oh, twice. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> we are, our, our, our best friends, they've homeschooled their kids and their kids are now teenagers and they've been homeschooled their whole lives and they're amazing at it. And I think, They've enjoyed watching us have a go at homeschooling our children, <laughs> which we've always said we would be horrible homeschool parents. And this has proven that to be true. We were right. We're not great at it. We're getting better, but we're not we're not awesome. But it's still fun. Yeah. And through this whole thing, we've been super, super busy just even with them homeschooling. And it seems like we've all run a thousand miles an hour every which way and the funny parallel is, is our littlest one is now like four or five months old. I mm-hmm. lost complete track of all of that. <laughs> we are talking the other day. She's like, how old is she? Is she 19, 20? Uh, crap, we forgot. <laughs> we yeah, right. Keeping track. <laughs> but uh, when my older one was born, I had a job where I was able to be home quite a bit, work from home quite a bit as well. And watching her grow up and watching her go through all these phases – in in her life and everything i forgot about that and now yeah. getting to do the same thing with this younger one i mean it's just weird timing how it's just happened that i've been able to be home most of the time you know working from home and all that for you know the last two months and just all the stuff that i'd be missing if i was at work all day you know if i was right. away from the house right. all day um, you know right. driving two and a half hours a day or give or take in traffic i mean this is a lot of stuff that i would be missing yeah. if it wasn't for this yeah. I mean, I think it's a big thing. I think it's probably going to be a shift in the way a lot of people do things with work. Even now when you see, oh, wow, look at the benefit of being home more. Maybe I can do most of my job here from the house or you know, half of it. Or even if you could do a third of it, that means a third more that I can be home and be a part of my family's life. And you realize how important that is and just their growth and their growing up seeing each other more. I mean, it's it's Yeah. It's been an eye opener for us, for sure. We talked about it in an episode a little while ago, but God doesn't necessarily cause these things to happen. Yeah, you know, it's not like He's up there saying like, "Eh, it's about time." You know, causes us to do these things, but through the midst of not fun times, you know, and uncertainty and rough periods of our life, you know, He's also able to work in those times, and I think He really does. Right. Yeah. For sure. I mean, it's almost like a, it's like kind of, it feels like a fun game to play when it's like, okay, let's see how we can find the Lord in this. You know, (laughs) I say, I say fun game to play. A lot of people would not appreciate that. You know, the thing is, is when you're so, when you've seen the Lord move in your life in in so many crazy ways that have looked like maybe a pandemic or looked like a horrible thing. And then you see how the Lord can turn that around and use it for something to bring you closer to him or to bring you closer to your family, to bring change and to bring something beautiful. It's almost like I, in, in some ways, I, I know I joked about it being a game, but it's almost like you, in some ways you, I do have a responsibility to try to find him in all those moments. Like, okay, this looks pretty horrible right now and I can't see a way out of this where something doesn't happen massively bad to us or something like that. I mean, you know, the fear creeps in and tells you all kinds of scenarios that aren't going to end up great. But it's almost like, man, I have a responsibility to to, to find the Lord in this because I've seen too much. I've seen how he moved in my life so many times in so many ways that why would he not do it again? And that way it is cool to just step back and be like, okay, God, I'm kind of freaking out right now, but you're going to do something in this. And I'm just going to, I'm going to look for you in every moment through this. It's crazy how many churches are seeing higher quote-unquote attendance through their online yeah. services and it's crazy to see how many people are searching for more throughout this whole thing yeah and i think it was this last episode here we're talking about how just all we see is just numbers we see case counts we see fatality counts right uh, you know all, all we see is this going on around but 
I mean, what you're saying is exactly right. It's like, how is God moving through all this? You know, this is yeah. all we see, you know, if we listen to media, if we watch Facebook, if we're watching the news every day, but what's God actually doing through this? How many marriages are being restored? How many right. people are finding God for the first time through these online services where there's no pressure? You don't yeah. have to walk in the door and yeah. feel awkward. You can just open up the live stream and All right. you know, go to church. Right. Oh, there's so many people probably that are going to church now through their devices that would, yeah, like you said, would, would have just feared walking in the doors and fear, you know, and not don't like people watching them or fear like, feel like maybe they wouldn't have been accepted walking in, but maybe they will tune in and then the Lord can speak to them through that. Even in just leading worship, I had somebody ask me this, like, is it harder to lead work? Cause we, we do at Bethel church where I'm, where I'm at. We do our Sunday morning service at eight o'clock on Sunday morning. We'll go just the band and whoever's speaking that Sunday will be at church. We'll go to the actual church and just go up on stage like normal and just have the service and just, you know, lead worship and the speaking and, and we film it all like we usually do. Luckily we streamed our services anyway and they do an amazing job. So we're really just not having the congregation there. Other than that, it, gets, it feels pretty normal. But someone was saying, like, is it dude, is it hard to lead worship and there's no one out there in the crowd? I mean, do you, you like, does it feel weird? Does it feel like it's more structured and you're you're less free to do whatever? And, and I was like, in some weird way, it actually feels easier. I feel like I feel more freedom on it. And I don't know if maybe because it's, I don't see anybody there. So it's sometimes, you know, fear of men and whatever. What, what am I going to look like? Am I going to look dumb? That can creep in. And I don't worry about that as much when I don't see anyone out there. <laughs> so in some ways, it's been a little freeing to just be like, well, I mean, I know there's a camera there and I know there's thousands of people on the other side of that camera, but I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm just thinking that right now, it's just me and the guys with me up here leading. I look down on the right and I see Pastor Bill over there worshiping and I'm like, all right, let's go. I'm, I'm good. Let, that's all I need. And I'll just go where you want me to go, Lord. It makes sense that it would be that same way for people who might struggle coming to church because of eyes on them, or maybe there's a social anxiety or something that could come on people. But there's small churches all over this country who maybe have 50 people to 100 in attendance, but then right now they're getting thousands of views <laughs> on yeah. their on their on their sermons on their worship times, and that's how amazing is that? It's so cool. A church that I've worked with a little bit in the middle of Wyoming, where we're from, they've even gotten a little bit of publicity from local papers and stuff because they've done a drive-in. They've always done their oh, stuff yeah. online through Facebook Live and stuff, but they've moved all of their stuff outside and they do kind of a drive-in kind of a worship style at their facility. It got a little publicity through one of the local paper posts that, you know, who knows if that would have happened if... Right. We didn't have to do this so where it got some eyes on them because they were totally. doing something different. Yeah. No, that's totally true. Yeah. It's it's crazy how the Lord can use whatever, really. <laughs> yep. So let's talk a little bit about Josh Baldwin here. All and right. <laughs> we are talking just a second ago that this is your absolute most favorite topic ever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding, that did not happen. <laughs> but uh, tell us about your story and what got you to being Josh Baldwin, the worship leader. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm gosh. sensing something yeah. here. It's nothing bad, just a lot of years. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm from a little town in North Carolina, Albemarle, North Carolina, right outside of Charlotte. And... I grew up in church. My dad's a pastor, but my dad was also a worship leader. He led worship a lot as I was growing up, and and that's when I really fell in love with music and with worship when I was a, oh gosh, I mean, I was probably nine, ten years old when I started wanting to play music, and I started playing drums, and I, I played drums for him in church starting at age 12 on until I left for college and ministry school. That was my intro into music and worship. And then I started leading worship and playing guitar when I was in high school. 
it was just kind of something that felt natural to me. And, and also that was at a time when it didn't feel like necessarily something you could do for a job. I mean, that was like, you know, that was in the night, that was mid, the, mid to late nineties. It wasn't as much of like a career path <laughs> as it, as it can, as it is now, which I'm, is amazing. And um, yeah, so it was always something I loved to do. And I really knew that I was in a certain, in a way called to do it, but, on the other end, it was like, but what am I going to do for a living? You know, it was like, th- that was always the other, because I can't obviously feed my family doing this. But nothing else ever felt right to me. I went to a college, I went to Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee, and quickly realized that I wasn't cut out for college. And I didn't even really know what I wanted to do there. I just kind of went there because all my friends were going. I ended up, I never went to class. I, ne- <laughs> I mean, I wasn't a bad kid. I, I wasn't like doing drugs or doing, I mean, I still love Jesus. I went to church. I just hated school, but I would stay home and just play my guitar, listen to music and think about writing songs. And so, I, <laughs> so that got me into academic probation, which was pretty cool. But <laughs> <laughs> from there, I actually, I left after a couple of years there. I went home for a little bit, worked in a mobile home factory, and saved up money to go to a ministry school in Charlotte. And that was when I really just just felt, I just realized, like, okay, yeah, this is what I want to do with my life. And that's when I started writing songs. You know, that was early 2000. I think that was 2001 when that happened. It was probably 15 years of just being a worship leader and worship pastor at uh, a part of this ministry in Charlotte, but also at a small church in Charlotte. And part of that time was I was in a small church in the mountains of North Carolina and just kind of plugging away, doing that, barely making it, but loving what I was doing and knowing that I was where I was supposed to be as far as like my job per se. I'm using air quotes, (laughs) but (laughs) yeah. And then, you know, through that, I got to be friends with um, some of the guys from Bethel Music and with Brian Johnson and his wife, Jen. And, And through them hearing some of my music, they asked me if I would be a part of Bethel Music, but I was going to stay in Charlotte. At that time, I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, and, and I was going to just live in Charlotte but still be a part of Bethel. I was blown away. I mean, this is – I'm in my mid-30s at this time, which I don't know. You know, mid-30s, we joke about that in worship leader years. Like, I joke about 40 in worship leader years is like 85, really. So <laughs> – well, but um, you know you've yeah. really hit that shift when you get away from the skinny jeans. I mean, that's, yes, <laughs> that's when you've hit to like the midlife there. Yeah, when you start not caring enough. Uh, you know what? The funny thing is, quarantine has got. I bought like five pairs of sweatpants, and I think I've only wore sweatpants for the last three months and just not cared at all. So but, this um, is a true story. Yeah. I'm getting ready, kind of. I think it was like midday or something like that. Like I put gym shorts on just kind of my normal like i'm gonna go for a run kind of thing and my wife looks at me like why are you dressing up (laughs) i'm like so i'm sitting here thinking like she's gonna be straight up blown away when i actually like wear real pants or something like that i mean if this is dressing up wow no that's uh i think that's kind of the way my wife looks at me when i'm like hey i'm gonna go go uh what are you doing i'm gonna go take a shower okay and she's like why (laughs) Like just, I'm starting to smell myself. Like this is not for anyone else, but just me. I just need a moment and to get alone, you know. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, Where were that we? quarant- <laughs> quarantine COVID apparel is very loose and very comfy. <laughs> very much so. Um, yeah, but oh yeah, we can go back to me if you want to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I signed with Bethel Music in two thousand six years ago, two thousand fourteen, and we were still in North Carolina. And we had plans to just that was going to be what we do. We were going to stay in North Carolina, but I'll I'll be with Bethel Music, and that lasted for a year. And we, after a year of feeling like we were supposed to move, we I finally caved to my wife and the Holy Spirit, and I said yes. And so we moved to Redding, California, in two thousand fifteen, and so we've been there. For five years, we just love it. We love it there. And it's seeing what the Lord's done, and, you know, not just in my life as a worship leader. And I mean, he's definitely like put his hand on songs and and albums and just the worship. And it's, and it's gone further than I ever thought it would. And especially in my, I mean, I went all through my 20s thinking that 
something amazing was going to happen and I was going to be this famous worship leader or whatever. Not like dumb dreams and not bad, but just, you know, dreams and goals. And and, I, and none of that happened by the time I was 30. And so I thought, well, I, it can't happen now. And I just finally laid that aside and, and began to just kind of focus on what the Lord had given me, this amazing church family that I was supposed to help pastor and worship lead. And and I think the minute I started focusing on that and just focusing on writing the songs that the Lord had given me for this place, he started to breathe on it and started to open up these doors that have that have led me to where I am now. And 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 I'm so glad that it's happened the way it's happened because I appreciate it so much more now and I feel I'm not quite as dumb as I was in my twenties. And so <laughs> I mean I think I'm able to handle it better. But yeah, it's been such a wild ride, but also just such an amazing journey of seeing the Lord just put his hand on our lives and do things in his timing and not our timing, which is so much better. His timing is so much better. (laughs) Isn't that crazy that we put our own bounds on it? Like, I can't be a songwriter over the age of 30. I mean, once you're 30 (laughs) or mid 30s, like you're set, you're down the road. Yeah. Oh, it, it is crazy. So I grew up in a Christian home, like I said, and I grew up really only being allowed to listen to Christian music, whether I liked it or not. Luckily, I did like it. I loved it. I was a big Stephen Chris Chapman fan. I mean, he oh was probably the, he's probably the reason I picked up acoustic guitar and wanted to write songs. So I finally got to go to the Dove Awards this past year, and I, and I was honored to be nominated for a couple and we were joking around because the one that I was not one of them that I was nominated for was the best new artist. And I was joking with my buddies that I was like, I bet if I won that, which I didn't win, but if I won it, I was like, I'm, I wonder if I would be the oldest new artist to, to ever have won that award. <laughs> I was like, I'm a 40 year old new artist. So the funny thing is, I, I, and I shared a dressing room with him. He's a very sweet guy, uh, Aaron Cole. He won. And I was in the dressing room before the Devil Horns with him. And I was like, Aaron, how old are you? Because we were, you know, that's I know what it was. He had the first Jordans on, which is very fitting because I just got through watching The Last Dance last night. <laughs> the, the Jordan documentary. I'm a big sports fan. And Aaron had the new Jordans on. Or the no, the first Jordans on. He had worn for that night. And I was like, did you ever, you never saw Jordan play, did you? <laughs> He's like, no. And I said, Aaron, how old are you? And he said, I'm 20. And I was like, oh, I'm 40. And then uh, he goes, my dad's 40. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. So that was when I was like, oh, all right. Well, I'm an old man now. But <laughs> yeah, it's just cool to see the Lord just put his hand and do little things, little things like that, that I would have never thought I'd get to be a part of. But he just waits. And then he's like, hey, here, this is going to be a special time. And the funny thing is, he knows when we're ready more so than we do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> that led to your new, is it an EP or an album? I, I lose track of these you, things way well, too easily for what I do. I, <laughs> I mean, I think technically we were calling it an EP, and it ended up, I don't know where it stops being an EP and starts being an LP, but <laughs> it's an EP in title, but... It's definitely as long as most albums. I'm not gonna lie. It's a. I think it ended up being six or seven songs. It's live worship, and we didn't really edit any of it. It's just kind of all how it came out. It's probably close to 50 minutes long. So, it's probably the longest EP you will ever hear in your life. <laughs> but, but that's what it is. But yeah, we we're I'm pretty pumped about that. Yeah, checking it here. It's seven songs and 47 minutes, according yeah, to the okay. Almighty Spotify. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay, I was close. I was close. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, it was recorded live worship. Tell us what, like, actual live worship with people is like, because I've yeah. completely forgotten. <laughs> yeah, it's not lost on me that I just put out an album called Live at Church during a time when nothing's live at church right now. Well, I guess it's live at church over our computers and streaming, but I've been working on a new album of all new songs right now. I'm in the studio working on that. That's supposed to come out in the fall or September, something like that. So I was working on those songs and I just, I kept thinking about these old songs that I'd had that we'd been singing in our church for the last two or three years. And I was talking to my wife and I was like, I just want to, before I put this next album out of all new songs, I would love to just have an album full of these 
live moments with my older songs to release and have out there and almost close the chapter on that time, if you will. That's what we did. And we, and we, you know, we decided to do all that before the quarantine hit. We did that. We, I went back and found these moments from the last two years at our church and just found the ones that really felt special as far as like, not just for those moments specifically, but felt like they could be special for everyone, you know, for the rest of time. <laughs> and so when we found those, we were able to put them all together and release this. And it's crazy that, you know, we ended up releasing it during this time when everyone's home, which um, I know for me, it's been special because in some ways it's cool to listen to it at a time when we're not together live. We're not at our congregations. And, and I know I miss it. I mean, I'm, I'm, we, it's been special to be home, but um, there's something I miss about this, that corporate gathering. It's cool to be able to listen to this album that is a reminder of what it was like. And so that's, yeah, that's, that's what's been a blessing about it for us is just that it can be hopefully some hope for people too to, to listen back to, okay, this is what it's like when we all gather corporately and worship. We've really loved it. It's almost like a what we have to look forward to at this point. Right. Totally. And so you're saying that you have a new album coming out in September. I do. Uh, can we get a little bit of a preview of that? What's coming out yeah. with that one? I mean, now do you, I'm, want, now me, do you want me to sing it or do you want me just to, well, me I mean, to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm open. <laughs> no, I'll spare you. I'll spare you right now. So it's coming out in uh, sometime in September. That's the plan as of right now. The title track or what i'm pretty sure is going to be the title of it is coming out in a few weeks <laughs> and that's called um it's called evidence this album is that well that song specifically is was really written out of the the chorus just says I've, i see the evidence of your goodness all over my life i see the promises in fulfillment all over my life and it's cool because it kind of i mean after just spilling my life story here to you uh, a condensed version it's cool to talk about that song because that song essentially is a reminder of what the Lord's done in my life. There's another part of it that talks about all throughout my history, his faithfulness has walked beside me. So that song is very much a reminder of the faithfulness of the Lord and not in just the history of my life, but when I think about it, I think about my dad and my parents and the Lord's hand on their life and and not even just them too. And I think about my grandparents and the Lord's hand on their life and just the history of the Lord's faithfulness on generations that have led up to even me and now my kids. And I think that song is, it's really been special to us now, just being this season where, like we said, the fear can creep in and nothing gets rid of that. And nothing reminds me of the love of the Lord like thinking about how faithful he's been and just being great and having that grateful heart. That's what that song is really about is the evidence of the Lord in our lives and the evidence of him all around and of his goodness. And I think that that's in the album. This album is, it feels special. It's coming together. There's definitely some, some worship, more corporate worship type songs in there, but then some heartfelt songs that speak to, um, hard moments that maybe we're walking down there. There's, there's one in particular called Safe in Your Arms that I wrote with my friend who went through a really, really tough time the past year. And that song just, um, it, it's been special just because it reminds me of just of the safety and, and the protection of resting in the Lord, resting in the Lord. And I mean, you know, the Psalm 91, just under the shadow of his wings. So I'm excited for it. I think releasing the live album has kind of helped me in some ways in my mind and in my heart close the chapter on the last three years and move forward to looking at what's coming. And uh, yeah, I'm pumped for it. Well, I mean, I'm getting excited for it now, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you some really bad demo tracks. After that. <laughs> oh, perfect. We'll use that to book in the podcast. Here. <laughs> okay. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Uh, you're talking about just bringing some of those moments back, and that's that was yeah. the, my first impression with the, you know the CVP this live at church was like I've heard this song before like yeah <laughs> I was wondering yeah. if I missed something but <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> there, there's there's one new song on there um, well there's a new song My King Forever that had never been released that that it'll, it'll be on my new album coming out too but that's the live version of it and then um, 
The only other new part on that is this spontaneous song that I just started singing that we threw on there. But yeah, it's a kind of my old faithfuls that I lead a lot at church that we we wanted to finally get out. Well, I've been loving it for the past few days. And Thank you. Started listening to it, and man, I I just can't wait until we can get back and sing these live at church again. Oh yeah, yeah, for real. Someone was talking to me about it. And they were like, "Is it live at church or live at church?" It's <laughs> like either one. I was like either one. Whatever. Depends They're on both the weekend. Good. Yeah, it depends on it depends on how many services you have at your church. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I do live at church. Yeah, it's, you start mapping out where your cot's going to be and <laughs> what classroom you can just sneak into. You know, and I mean, the funny thing is, we're all home right now, and so our church has been happening at home. So we are are actually living at church right now. So. <laughs> and this has been deep thoughts with Josh Baldwin. Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I'm going to steal on that one for a while. <laughs> wow. That just came to me. Yeah. That was a little nugget, a little, little gold nugget from heaven. Yeah. I, I love when those happen and it's the right time. Not like an hour or two later. It's like, Oh man, you know what? <laughs> I should have said that. No. <laughs> awesome. Man. Well, uh, oh, we'll be looking forward to that in September and, uh, we definitely awesome. appreciate you hanging out with us for a while. Thanks for having me. This has been fun. 